Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this is my 31 days of horror movie reviews. And I just got done watching a movie that this is my first time watching said film. Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. This is a movie that came out in 1986. It was directed by John McNaughton. And the plot. The plot is we follow Michael Rooker, who is very young in this movie. It's kind of weird that I've obviously, I think The Walking Dead is the first time that I started to really notice Michael Rooker. I know that he had been around even before that, Mallrats and other films that he had been in. But Walking Dead was the first thing that I was like, okay, I'm going to know this guy by name. Uh, but going back this far back and seeing how young he was, I don't know if this is his first film, but he's very young. He plays Henry, who's a serial killer. <laughs> Simple enough. And you kind of just follow him going around and killing various people in so many different ways for so many unknown reasons. And then he gets involved with a brother and sister. He's sort of staying with them. And at first, the whole time I'm thinking, okay, this movie is going to be about Henry going out and killing people behind their back. And then they're going to discover what he's doing. And it might be a whole showdown that way. But no. Because not only is Henry going around and killing people, the brother is in on it too. Or at least, the not Henry's brother, but the brother that he's staying with, Otis. Like, he's all about it, and he even partakes in some of it. And so this just becomes a sick fucking trip of sick people doing a bunch of sick shit. What I thought of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer was, I enjoyed the movie, but enjoy might be the wrong word to describe a disturbing movie like this. I can appreciate what this movie is. Let's put it that way. First things first. I looked up the budget of this movie, not because I was expecting it to be on the cheaper side. I was just more curious, especially when I get back to watching older films, whether it's 70s or 80s type films. And so this movie's budget was $110,000. That was the budget of this movie. I would guess that this is a lower budget film, <laughs> you know, but even for the time, this is real low budget. And it's not like I was watching this movie and like I could tell. No, I, I would not have been able to tell. If he had told me that this movie cost a couple million, I would have been like, okay, that makes sense. Sure. So that's the first thing that I'm impressed with, what they were able to do with such little resources and little money, how some of these kill scenes, I guess... As bare bones as they were, as limited as they were, maybe that's why the kills were as effective as they were. Because what they did for maybe the first half of this movie, and now that I think about it, maybe it is mostly because they didn't have the budget to show all the kills. But I thought it was quite interesting how they would show Michael Rooker go from place to place and then they would show you the aftermath of whichever dead body he had just killed. They would show you the body. They would show you that person in their house or maybe their body floating in the river or maybe just wherever their body happens to be. And it's the aftermath. And then you would start to hear the noises, the audio of him killing them. And it sort of was fucked up because you haven't to almost imagine what happened or what could have happened or what it sounds like happened and it's creepy you know your own imagination is almost worse than seeing the actual event take down and eventually they do show some kills though so it's not like every kill is like that they do show michael rooker killing a bunch of people uh in some brutal way especially this one dude at the tv shop that guy gets it really bad but as I mentioned, Michael Rooker, Henry, he ends up sort of living with this guy, Otis, played by Tom Towles. And at first, I thought Otis was just going to be kind of a 
regular dude and who really knows how he knows Henry. But then it's not long before you could tell that Otis is a creepy fuck. You know, he's a pervert. He says really dirty things. Even to his own sister, he like says things that made me wonder, are they really a brother and sister? Because he's way too comfortable saying inappropriate things to her and just, it's gross, you know, it's gross. It almost made me like Henry more than Otis in a weird way, even before Otis started to kill people, even before Otis started to join in on the fun. When Otis was just being creepy, I was like, all right, I gravitate more towards Henry as fucked up as he is. At least he's not nasty about it. At least he doesn't talk like a creep. And then the sister, Becky, who is played by Tracy Arnold, she immediately takes a liking to Henry. She immediately, after talking to him, sort of feels connected to him, feels like maybe there's something between them. And so then I started to think, okay, like what's going to happen here is, are we going to have a situation where Becky gets in the wrong place at the wrong time and has to deal with it? No, again, this movie... It almost felt like I knew where it was going to go, but then it wouldn't go that way. It would go in other directions. It would take all these different turns, and it would keep me guessing constantly. And so I guess I appreciated that. Some of the most fucked up moments in the film is when Otis breaks his TV. So they go out to buy a TV. I already told you what happens to the TV shop guy. But they decide to buy their own video camera. And in buying this video camera, they decide to record themselves killing people. And there's a couple of kills from the camera's point of view, or even Otis watching back the footage of them killing people, and especially Otis doing things to the bodies that, again, is fucking awful. But that was fucked up. It was the most fucked up shit that I think this movie had going on. And then I'm not going to get into how it ends, but this movie's only an hour and 20 something minutes. It's very short. It goes by very quick. And, and the ending was sort of depressing. You know, the ending was kind of like, man, this is sad <laughs> in so many different ways. But yeah, I somewhat... <laughs> kind of enjoyed Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. I at least appreciated uh, what the movie was able to do, again, with the resources, with the time, and the actors. The actors that they got, I thought, were good to to pull off what needed to be done here. And yeah, you know, it almost made me sit back and think, man, I should go out there and shoot my own fucked up horror movie, you know? Like, I, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and seeing this movie with this budget, being able to do that, I'm like, fuck it. Why not? You know? Why not? Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you too have seen Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. What do you think of it? Do you like it as well? Uh, did you grow up on this movie? <laughs> is this movie as fucked up as I am saying it is? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. To free my soul, getting hard to breathe in this society. I'm just a madman, please disagree. Leave me alone.